To catch tonight's species, you got to go deep, 1,500 to 2,200 feet of water to be exact. I caught my first in 1,700 feet of water, and it took me 45 minutes to manually reel him in. Swordfish are tough, and tonight we'll cover it all here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, powered by Harbor Trucks and presented by Yamaha. You're tuning in for another week here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. We're your hosts, Bree Gabrielle and Captain Rick Murphy with an outstanding live audience who's helping us start your August off right because the bite may be small, but you're in for a big surprise if you can get a sortie to the surface and on the boat, right, Rick? You're absolutely right, Bree. And you know, I was talking at the open mm -hmm. about the first one I ever caught and to reel one in in 1,700 feet of water in the heat in August, yeah, I can't imagine it's that. not something that I'm going to forget. I've caught a few, but I just pushed a button. <laughs> <laughs> so I give you mad props for Whatever that works, babe, whatever <laughs> yeah, exactly, works. exactly, whatever works. And of course, we have Dave over at the CCA Workbench who has some things to teach us. 45 with... minutes was pretty good, man. That's <laughs> lucky. You know, you usually a lot of people fight him for a lot longer than that, unfortunately. They, they drag kills. Drag kills. Well, drag kills, man. Put the drag on them. Listen, I had Randy driving the boat, and that also helps when you got a guy who's really trained at what they're going to do. He stayed a step ahead all the time. Yep, Beauty. you got to have good captains. Yeah, man. All right, well, if you plan on fishing in the Casa Vieja Southeast region this weekend, Captain Jimbo Thomas is starting us off with some valuable sword fishing know-how. Go for it, Jimbo. That's right, and to get that sucker up 45 minutes, it'd take me that long just to reel the weight in. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, traditionally, swordfish were targeted at, at night, but in, in the last 10 or so years, daytime sword fishing has become really popular. Now, lately, both the daytime and the nighttime bites have been pretty good when the weather cooperates, and you want to have good weather when you head out there whether it's daytime or nighttime, because you're a good ways offshore. And I'd say that the daytime sword fishing has become more popular than the nighttime, but there are still a few night riders that head offshore out there at night. I like my sleep, so daytime's where I get out there. <laughs> now, typically we fish in 1,500 to 2,000 feet of water, which is anywhere from 15 to 20 miles offshore, depending on what part of the region that you're fishing out of. As for bait, you want to use squid, dolphin or bonita strips in the daytime and then at night squid works well live baits also work good blue runners speedos tinker mackerels those are, are great baits at night and whether you're daytime or nighttime you want to use some heavy leader two to three hundred pound monofilament leader and some strong hooks 10-0 to 12-0 and you want to attach some lights up at the top of your leader whether it's on the bottom or on the top day or night you want to use some lights that's going to attract these swordfish now at night, you want to drift the spread of bait uh, staggered at various depths, anywhere from say 50 to 400 feet on 50 to 80 pound class tackle. You can go lighter, but you might be fighting them a lot longer than that 45 minutes. And then in the daytime, an electric reel is recommended because I like to fish uh, with an, uh, on the bottom with that electric reel in that 1,500 to 2,000 uh, foot range. And when to hit bottom out there, you got to use some heavy weight, anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds of weight, depending on what the current is. And then if you're fishing in the daytime, you want to use braided line. It's going to work a lot better because this thin diameter is going to allow you to cut through that current and it's going to eliminate a lot of that belly in the line, making it a lot easier for you to hold the bottom. Now, the swords out here are typically anywhere from 50 to 300 pounds or more. I've heard of them up to roughly 500 pounds over the last few years. And also recently, there's been a couple big bluefin tunas, I mean giant ones, four, five, six hundred pounds caught from people sword fishing in the daytime. And these tunas have been biting down on the bottom, but they're out of season, so they had to be released which is a good thing. I'll catch them when they go up to Canada. <laughs> now, saying offshore dolphin, they're still being found in decent numbers anywhere from 10 to 15 miles offshore. And it's pretty much like it's been the last month. And the bulk of these dolphins, they're being caught around large patches of sargasm that are coming through from one day to the next. You have a lot more grass or a lot less. It just depends uh, on uh, the mass of grass and it coming through in that Gulf Stream current. Some of these patches that we've been finding have been like extra large, huge, uh, an acre or even the size of a football field, some of these patches. Now some of these fish are being caught around those weed patches on, on the troll with ballyhoo and feathers or lures, 
but a lot of the time that seaweed's so bad it's made it uh, really tough to troll through. Or you can just stop and put out some live and cut bait and drift around those grass patches, wait for the fish to find you. And if you don't have any live bait, there's been no shortage of these small blue runners hanging under those grass patches. And you can drop down your sabiki rig, catch them, fill up your bait well. And if there are any dolphin in the area, that bait fishing commotion, that'll definitely bring them up. Now, the mornings have been a little bit slow, but in the afternoons, it seems like these fish have been coming up to the surface. And then what few birds we have been seeing have also been in the afternoon when those fish come up to the surface. And most of the, the fish have been good-sized schoolies in the five to eight pound range with an occasional larger one mixed in. Now, I got a photo here. This is Andrew, Christopher, and Nick Scardina of the Scardina Brothers fishing team with a nice catch of schoolies and they caught those out with their dad Jim on their 31 foot contender uh, just a couple days ago. Those right. kids have been fishing with me, they're fishing maniacs. <laughs> well that's they how they like grow it. up, bub. All right, Perfect. inshore. All right, moving inshore, Flats of Biscayne Bay have, have been producing some good permit and bone fishing. You want to fish on any of those outside flats from Soldier's Key, South Angel Fish Creek, especially on the incoming tide. And the tides have been extremely low, so there's been a lot of water moving in on the incoming. Although it's, as we get further from the moon, those tides are gonna slow down. You wanna use a small blue crab, that's what those permit have been eating the best, and the bonefish have also been feeding on them. And look for some flats with some uh, corally bottom that have some activity on them. If you see stingrays, sharks swimming through them, barracudas, that's what those, uh, where those permit are going to be because that's where the food is. You can also use crab pattern flies along with live shrimp. And you want to get out there early in the morning before those flats get too hot or wait till the, the later afternoon when that water starts to cool down. Then we got catch and release snook fishing in the inlets. That's still one of our other best inshore bets. The snook are schooled up in the inlets throughout the region and they're being caught on live baits such as pilchers, herrings, pinfish, croakers or mullet. You want to fish them near the bottom on a Jupiter rig. Now a lot of these fish have been in the are big, big like 20 pounders or so. So you want to use at least 40 to 50 pound fluoro leader and 5.0 to 6.0 circle hooks. If you don't have any live bait, try working flare hawk jigs or four inch DOA or bass assassin jerk baits along the bottom. And both the incoming and outgoing tides have been good early in the mornings or late in the afternoons and into the evenings. Now remember, these fish are schooled up in those inlets to spawn, so take care when you release them so we don't put too much stress on them and hurt them up so they can do their thing. All right, Jimbo, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the R&R &R tackle hotspots from the southeast region inshore. Fish live crabs for permit and bonefish on the outside flats of Biscayne Bay. And then offshore, head offshore and look for weed, seaweeds and birds working over the schools of dolphin. Also, make sure you have live and cut bait ready. All right, right. Captain Pat Deneen in the Yeti Panhandle region is next on deck and has good news if you're an early bird or a night owl. Hi, Pat. Hey, Bree. Uh, sword fishing is, is popular in the Panhandle. It's popular daytime and nighttime, just like Jimbo was mentioning. And it's particularly popular during these summer months when the weather is, is much more predictable. Most of our fish are targeted in, in 1,200 to 1,500 feet of water, and that's 50 to 60 miles offshore. So you're, you're definitely looking, have, looking for a weather window. Uh, but, you know, that, those numbers, those depth numbers aren't golden. We've caught the biggest one we've ever caught in 6,000 feet of water, so you really never know. Uh, nighttime, they come to the surface waters where anglers drift and float several lines staggered at depths from 50 to several hundred feet, uh, baited with squid or squid or, or bunk tinker mackerels or strip baits. But during the daytime, the fish are, the fish are on the bottom, and they're deep drop fishing using sacrificial weights something to get the bait, the fish lean to the bottom. We don't have the currents like Jimbo has in his area, so, so we're not using 10 to 15 pound weights to get down there. I go to the salvage yard, pick up a handful of rebars, the thicker the better, maybe three foot sections, and use them kind of as a javelin bait. You put a little copper hook on the top, hook that copper hook to your bait hook, send it to the bottom, and when it hits the bottom, you can easily dislodge that rebar, and now you're drifting your bait. Uh, the baits of choice include squid, belly strips, and small butterfly bonita. And in my opinion, the captains that, are, that really work at that daytime fishing for them are consistently catching bigger and more swordfish than the nighttime guys. And Captain Adam Peebles out of, out of Destin, he has one-shot charters. He specializes in that daytime sword fishing, and he's got it figured out probably better than anybody else in the panhandle. 
And there's a photo there of a really big swordfish or a real nice swordfish that Captain Peebles and his crew caught this week. They went four wow. for four on one day and three for three on, a, on the next day. So he's got to dial in. Those boys are on it, man. You got it. All right, tell me a little bit more about what's happening offshore. Rick, the Amberjacks opened on the 1st of August after a, a fairly short closure, and the anglers are immediately taking advantage of that, of that open fishery. There's some big jacks being caught, primarily above structure in federal waters, but plenty of bigger wrecks in the state waters also have legal jacks on them. The big, lively, strong baits are the key to getting bites. The hardtails are the number one go-to bait, but some of the biggest AJs I've seen caught ate a mingo snapper, a white snapper, or similar reef fish while it was either being caught or while it was being used for bait. Usually the higher relief bottom spots are the best ones for the jacks, and you want to use a long leader to give your bait plenty of freedom to move. And you also want to, when, when you get the bite, move the boat away from the, from the structure to keep that jack from going down and breaking off. And finally, you want to keep another bait fishing while fighting a fish. That hooked fish often fires up the other fish to bite, and you can get multiple multiple bites that way. Amberjacks are running 30 to 50 plus pounds, and then that's a strong fighting fish. You got it. All right, hey, what... moving inshore, Rick, the, the trout fishing has been pretty steady for, the, for those wanting to chase the trout. Uh, the bite's been extremely early in the morning or late in the afternoon or at night under the dock lights. It's been pretty warm up here in the panhandle. So that early bite, late bite, or at night. The week's rain should have them pushed down in that lower base systems, uh, but you can also expect some ladyfish, bluefish, Spanish mackerel, and occasional jack to take your bait while, you know, while casting a flat for, for uh, speckled trout. In the day, look for them on the deeper spotty bottom grass flats and chum, chum liberally with pilchards or small menhaden. Free line your bait or fish them under a cork. And at night, the live bait is also the best. Either free line them or use a Carolina rig with a light leader and fish them off the bottom. Uh, so that, that's been pretty good. And finally, in short, the black tip sharks along the beaches are, are pretty much throughout the whole panhandle and in the lower bay systems, particularly in St. Joe and St. Andrews Bays. Anywhere you're going to find schools of ladyfish, bluefish, or bait along the shoreline, the chances are there are some, if not a bunch of black tips nearby. And they're particularly fun to sight fish um, using 20 to 30 pound spin and tackle. We use a seven knot circle hook, 12 to 18, 18 inches of wire, and then baits of choice are ladyfish strips, small bluefish, lots of garments or herrings. You know, you just find the fish, lead them a little bit, and you get to watch the bite. The fish are running 10 to 15, 10 to 50 pounds, and it's not uncommon for those guys to go airborne. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty fun fishing. You're absolutely right, Pat. Great report from the Yeti Panhandle region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Inshore, big schools of Jack Crevals are cruising the flats in the bay. Now look for them pushing wakes and busting mullet, and you can cast large plugs to catch these big jacks. And then offshore, amber jacks and mangrove snappers on the larger deep wrecks, Bree. All right, Rick, well, we're just getting started here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. And coming up next, we're dropping our line down to the Keys region. And then Dave is going to show us how to drop that line at the CCA workbench. Dave, it looks like you're having a party over there. Exactly. It's a swordfish <laughs> party. I got balloons and disco lights. Perfect. Look, it's going to be perfect Perfect. For me. We'll it's be back. As long as you don't <laughs> dance, we're all right, Dave. Oh, boy. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Harbor Trucks. Visit harbortrucks.com. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Contender Boats, always in the game. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fishing info, and channel surfing. Daiquiri Deck, Sarasota's favorite place to meet. And Sea Sucker, get pumped. Harbor Trucks is giving away a brand new 2018 Nissan Titan XD with the Cummings Turbo Diesel. To enter, like our Facebook page and visit harbortrucks.com for more ways to win with the largest selection of new and pre-owned trucks in the country. An on-site towing and test course. Hassle-free buying and low, low, low prices. Harbor Trucks is the place to buy. Meet the water's lightest 25 horsepower four-stroke, the all-new Yamaha F25, the new standard in 25 horsepower portable four-strokes. At just 126 pounds, it's got the best power to weight ratio of any 25 horsepower four-stroke on the water. With performance that bests the previous Yamaha F25 and features like Yamaha's BTS for precise trolling speeds, batteryless EFI, built-in resting pads, and carry handles, it's the perfect portable power for small boats. It's 
one of the most ancient forms of hide-and-seek known to man. And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. Welcome back. Here's a look at the FWC news and notes. August 6th, there's a Sarasota PS boating course, and also on August 6th, there's the Volunteer Oyster Reef Restoration in Panama City. August 7th, look out for the Shore Bay Shark Fishing Workshop in Pensacola. For more information, visit myfwc.com. But now let's head to the TCA workbench for some rigs and techniques. Right, Bree. So let's head over here to the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques here at the CCA Workbench. And Dave, in 2010, we had Ray Rocher was our Southeast captain. Correct. And he decided to add additional charter boat R and R tackle, and he got a little too busy he for us. So we're lucky us. to have he him in here tonight. Us. <laughs> but <laughs> that's for Jimbo. You got a, you got an improvement. <laughs> no. So Ray, I want to say it's such a great honor to have you here because I know sword fishing in the daytime is something you love to do at nighttime. I know a lot of people have caught them with you. So let's just get right into it. Well, the, uh, the, the most interesting thing about nighttime fishing is you can fish more rods. Daytime's kind of one or two baits, kind of a, a patience game. Nighttime fishing, we'll fish generally three balloons. Our furthest balloon might be uh, three or 400 yards away from the boat, kind of shallower lead, and then stage it down deeper lead. Might be 50 to 100 feet on our number one, 200 feet or so on the number two and 400 feet on our number three and then maybe one or two tip rods. But like you say, kite fishing, fish as many rods as you can comfortably fish and have fun. Right. So, you know, if you really have a great team working on it, we might fish five. The idea is to fish shallower depths at night. And, and the most important thing to remember is the brighter the night, the deeper the bite. Got it. So Got it. we'll like have, it. you know, I mean, I've got a live bait hook here, typically six, seven feet to a wind-on leader. We use like a 25-foot wind-on uh, for the nighttime fishing with a mono top shot braid base. Now that bait, whether it's live or dead, would be about 80 feet from the lead. And then that's long, where the long leader. long leader, because it's almost like long lining. That d distance of the leader from the bait to the hook is what gives that fish time to eat before he comes tight on the lead or the rod. Tell me the optimum conditions, day or night, what do you want? Calm. Come. And I like light east wind. <laughs> light east wind. <laughs> because remember, uh, whether you're daytime or nighttime fishing, you got a bait, a lead, a balloon, or a rod tip. And if it's nighttime fishing, then a rod tip. So you got all these angles. A lot of stuff going on. A lot on. of stuff going on. And a lot of times that bite is very subtle. I'll fish just like one or two pounds of drag with a clicker, and you're really just listening for, you know. A like ticky tick. Yeah, just yeah. like Jaws, you know. And if you hear that, <laughs> lock it up and go. And many, many times that fish will even swim the bait. I've, I was telling Dave earlier, I've seen the balloon. We'll put a light on top of the balloon, and I'll look out there on a dark night, and you'll see a second light. It's the swordfish dragging the light that's near your hook right up to the surface. And oh. a lot of water. It's really good when they come up. Come up for you instead yeah. of staying down. <laughs> yeah. and All right, digging. so Ray, let's get into the rig itself. Okay. Well, nighttime fishing, like I said, you could bridle a live bait on the circle hook. You can use, you know, a tuna hook uh, with a dead bait, like you might see here. It's kind of like you're just cat fishing at nighttime, isn't exactly. it? You get you're soaking a big bait yep. underneath a balloon, a float. Yep. And in different depths. The idea for the distance away from the boat is coverage. I mean, that's how a long line works. Great distance, sweeping with the current to the north. The more coverage you have, the better your, your chances of catching a fish. It's a lot easier to fish them at night for an average fella. Lighter because, tackle. Yeah, and, 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 it, and they're, you don't have to worry about all the technical stuff of yeah. fishing a really heavy weight, which we're going to talk about yeah. in the daytime, when all the fish are down on the bottom yeah. instead of scattered throughout. 
at All night. Right. We better get to it. We're taking away. <laughs> so <Well>. day, <laughs> daytime fishing. Okay. Roughly 16 to 1900 feet. This is obviously a compressed rig. We're just trying to show you six or seven feet to a bait, whether it's a squid. I mean, RJ Boyle was nice enough to give us some baits that he rigs up. Bonita bellies, squid, six, seven feet to that bait. A light, we usually put it on a rigging band. We can move it about 30 feet from the bait, then another one maybe 60 feet. And remember, these leaders are 150 feet long. So this distance all the way to this wind-on leader, to the top of that wind-on leader, is about 150 feet, a little floss mark, and we can attach our weight. And it's gonna be that giant big one. This weight giant right there. thing here? Yeah, oh, big yeah. stick God. weight. Yeah. How and much does this up. weigh, right? That's a 12 pounder. 12 pounder. And you, and you, <laughs> feels bigger like than the redfish we ought to weigh in, bud. <laughs> but anyways, that weight is what allows you to not only get that bait 1,800 feet down on the bottom, but to fight the current. Remember your Gulf Stream current moves quickly on the surface layers, at least on the east coast here. You might have three or four knots in the top 400 feet, but when you get down near the bottom, it's not moving very fast. So when you deploy that bait, you got to think of one thing, put the bait in the orientation that it's going to be on the bottom, which means you actually drop the bait going north. Mm -hmm. Because once the bait's on the bottom, the boat's still going north, the bait's not really moving. So you're dragging it slowly to the north. Once that bait gets halfway down, you circle the boat back to the south and you chase that line, try to fish straight up and down. What's the mistake that we often make? Fishing too close to the bottom. Fishing too close to the bottom. Snag, snag bottom with 80 pound test <laughs> at 1800 feet. And all that With that stuff. big weight. Not only is it expensive, it's really hard to break the line and we don't want to leave the gear on the bottom. So but hit bottom, come up 100, 150 feet. Last year I tried to do one of these and I want you to know, I know that dumb guy who hung on the bottom a couple times, didn't we, Dave? Yeah, you you, can, you tried to convince me <laughs> oh, that that's I, was, Dave, I was on him. the bottom and I wasn't on the bottom and I knew immediately I was going, you know, I haven't done a lot of this, but I'm, I'm on the bottom. And I'm, no, no, you're not. It's a big fish. And I'm going, well, it's the biggest fish in the world because I've, <laughs> I've just hooked the world. And, then, and that was when I went with you, we was at a Marlin University down yeah. there with you guys, and it, and it just freaked me out how technical mm -hmm. this really is. And I wouldn't even attempt it unless I had somebody going out there with yeah. me because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of gear. It's a lot of money mm -hmm. that's going down. You know, yep. when you drop all that stuff down there. And, and it's hard. Yep. It's not an easy thing to do. The nighttime thing, <clears throat> any, anybody could do it. Anybody yep. could go out there and, and blow up a balloon and fish yep. under it. But this is a little, a little more difficult. Yeah. So, so Ray, do you, does R&R Tackle sell the leaders? We do, yeah, the wind-ons. Uh, one of these is RJ's, then these are ours. Uh, you know, you can buy most of the baits. You know, there's a lot of information online that you can dig into all this deeper. So. All right, guys, so if you need leaders, call my buddy Ray, tell him that you want the Rick Murphy discount. That doesn't mean <laughs> it's gonna be free, but maybe he'll give you a discount if you catch him on the right day. Ray, thank you thank so you. much for coming in. Yeah, it's pleasure. an honor to be standing next Thanks, to you brother. again. And Dave, yep. you're stealing money again. Exactly. You didn't have to do anything, Ray. You have not. good friends. When you, Come on. When you finally get that fish on you know, the surface and up to the boat, it's very rewarding because of how technical and how much goes into it. So it's very exciting if you can go do it. Well, if you're in luck at the Keys, and uh, wow, if you're in luck in the Keys, if your weekend agenda is going sword fishing. So Randy, just talk to us because I can't talk. Go for it. <laughs> Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, listening to Ray talk brought a bunch of memories back. We fished against each other a lot of years in swordfish tournaments, and having him tell you how it is is really a wonderful thing. The man is very good at what he does, and uh, certainly some good tips there. I enjoyed listening to it. You know, we talk about sword fishing in the Keys. The Keys are a, a, a long stretch of islands from Key Largo to Key, Rat, Key West, and guys catch them. Um, out on Floyd's wall, they catch them down off Wood's wall, and the main thing is getting in that deeper water, that 1,500, 1,800 feet, and you've got to be set up with it. Most of the fishing is done during the day, and our night bite down here has really tapered off over the last four or five years, so not a lot of guys do it. More guys do it during the day, so you got to be set up. Like Ray was saying, that long leader is very important. A fresh bait is even better if you could have a belly strip like a dolphin or a bonita, and a squid is always uh, always a go-to bait, but they're soft. Sometimes if they get hit a few times, they get tore up, and, and you don't get a bite. You've got to wind it up. And most of these guys are fishing electric reels. Not that they're trying to wind the fish in unsportingly, but you wind that 12-pound lead in in 1,800 feet, you're going to do it one time. 
So <laughs> these guys have electric reels for doing this so they can make multiple drops <laughs> during the day. One of the best guys in town, Captain Nick Stanzik, with his boat broad-minded out of Bud and Mary's, he catches swordfish. Seems like every time he goes, he catches them, and he's just very good at it. He's got a, a program that's dialed in. And he, he's a guy that really kind of pioneered a lot of this stuff with the day timing to perfect it, to get it really right where he could go out. And some days he'll fish two rods. You know, two rods in 1,800 feet is not an easy task. The conditions have to be right. But he's got a way of doing it that works. And um, another guy that does a lot of it is Captain Marty Lewis on the main attraction. I've got a photo of... Uh, a swordfish they caught a couple of days ago. Jason Long took the photo, but they've got some really good bottom down that way, and their swordfish bite is always pretty strong. All right, what else you got for us offshore there, Bubba? Blackfin tuna. You know, we've got a little spurt of tunas going on. Last week or so, conditions have changed a little bit. we got a little more wind. we got a, a little better condition out there for the tunas. They haven't been on the humps, but they're there now. And guys are catching them pretty steady. Now, it depends on how you want to get them. If you want tunas for dinner, you control your feathers. You control the eels, which are these little worm-looking things. They're black, and they also come in pink. They work really well at slow speed, and you could catch enough for dinner pretty quick. Now, if you want to target the bigger fish, 20, 30-pound blackfin tunas, you really need live bait, or vertical jigging works good as well. But the live bait, you chum with it, and you get these big fish up near the surface, and oftentimes it, in, it uh, allows the predators to come up, too. So you lose a few. But I've got a photo from uh, Richard Black. He's a young guy, Black Fly Charters, out of the Lorelei in Isla Mirada with a nice tuna they caught on the hump the other day. All right, let's go inshore, bub. Tarpon. You know, here we are coming into August. The tarpon bite in the backcountry has been pretty steady, and it's mainly in the morning. You get around the Flamingo area, there's been some small fish up on the flats, with, which a lot of the fly guys like because they don't take them two hours to land. And they've been pretty plentiful, but it's a morning thing. It's like first light, first couple of hours. And there's also some bigger ones in the channel if you want to use live bait like pinfish or a mullet. There's been some bigger fish in the channels, and the guys are also catching them on fly as well. The incoming tide's been, been uh, the best for doing that. And I've got a photo from Jared Raskob, one of the one of the premier guides in Isla Mirada, fishes at an angler's house marina, and his angler uh, Tim Neal with his first tarpon on fly. Boy, Tim just needs to go ahead and quit fishing for tarpon now after that being his first one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me about some redfish, bub. You know, the summer months it seems like the hotter the weather, the best the red fishing, and it holds true this year. Guys are finding some nice schools of redfish up on the flats and big schools right out in front of Flamingo and the surrounding islands have been pretty steady. Now, again, we talk about the tide. The tide is really critical to the backcountry, and your timing really has to be on to find these fish because once that water gets too high, these redfish move on and, you, and they're hard to find. But on that low rising tide, when they come out of the deeper water up onto the flat, you can really see them. You can see them pushing, waking, tailing sometimes. So you really have a better chance to target them. And also around the mangrove islands, these deeper troughs we have, guys will be snook fishing and they'll catch redfish as well. So kind of a mix right there. But I've got a photo, Captain Mike Alfano, a guide out of Isla Mirada as well, no stranger to catching redfish. He's, he loves pulling around for hours chasing these things. And he's got a photo of Luke Kernick with his redfish he caught yesterday. All right, thank you so much, Randy. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Florida Keys. Randy says, inshore, redfish, look out front on the flats around Flamingo area on the first of the incoming tide for schools of redfish. And then offshore, yellowtails anchoring 80 feet of water with the current going behind the boat. And then use plenty of chum and make sure you're patient. All right, Rick, let's check out some tournaments going on in the Florida Keys, shall okay, we? Okay, let's do it. All right. The Reef Lion Fish Derby is set for September 14th through the 16th in Key Largo. This tournament is geared to divers and prizes will be awarded on a team basis. The Herman Lucerne Memorial Backcountry Fishing Championship is set for September 21st through the 23rd based in Isla Mirada. Anglers are to target seven species during this tournament staged within the boundaries of Everglades National Park. The Take Stock in Children Backcountry Challenge is scheduled for September 28th through the 30th in Key Largo. Anglers will focus on species including trout, snook, and redfish while raising funds for local student scholarships. And now let's check in with Andy Newman to see what tournament he's featuring this week. Well hi guys. 
On this week's show, we're featuring a series of Florida Keys tournaments that have been raising funds for cystic fibrosis treatment and research for years. The Slam is September 7th to the 9th in Key West. The Bay Bone is October 5th through the 7th in Ala Mirada. And finally, the Red Bone is set for November 2nd to the 4th in Ala Mirada as well. They're all part of the Robert James Sales Red Bone Trilogy, where celebrities join anglers to fish the flats or backcountry to earn coveted artwork trophies. More details at redbone.org. And for more information on all other tournaments in the Florida Keys, it's always flakeys.com. Well, thank you very much, Andy. We're going into the deep on the East Coast with our East and Central East regions coming up here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. So stay hooked, and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by PowerPole, Swift, Silent, Secure, Bass Assassin, and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. The American Fishing Tackle Company, any fish, any water, since 1958. Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. As close as you're going to get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Guatemala. They're here, man. This has been a 20 year run, buddy. These things haven't left. There's no cycle. When it comes to sail fishing, this is the real deal. The amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. Harbor Trucks features the largest selection of new and pre-owned trucks in the country, an on-site towing and test course, and a team of truck specialists. Come line up every make and model in one location and find the truck of your dreams or we'll build it custom for you. Harbor Trucks, hassle-free buying and low, low, low prices. Check us out now at harbortrucks.com or two miles off I-75 in Port Charlotte, Florida. Welcome back. I have just one question. How would you like to win a Nissan Titan from Harbor Trucks? It's a good question, right? Yeah, well, the Harbor Trucks giveaway is making it easy, and all you have to do is go to their Facebook page, like it, mark going to an event, and tag a friend. But there are so many more ways to enter until the end of December, so head on over to harbortrucks.com for more information, and good luck. Rick, you have something to do with this, right? Uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yes. Just a little bit. When, when are you drawing the winner again? January 5th. January 5th. That's what I wanted that? to hear. There you go. All right, East Peeps, the Sorties are here, but you're going to have to put in the time and figure out a way to beat the heat because daytime is where it's at. Talk to us, Mike. You know, that's really the truth, Bree. The anglers who put in the time are definitely starting to break the code on sword fishing in my region. You know, while most of you will tell you that off uh, southern Palm Beach County, that's the way to go, but there's a group of anglers that are daytime sword fishing in 1,500 to 1,800 feet of water off Martin and St. Lucie counties that are really racking up some impressive catches. And really it's just about putting in that time, learning the techniques, and locating those fish because they're, they're all the way through those Florida Straits, all the way up to North Carolina. And this time of year, the swordfish are a little, you know, they're out they're like a little deeper at night, then they move into about 1,500 feet of water during the daytime. Often they're hunting around the small humps or peaks that are on the bottom that let them kind of get out of the current a little bit and find their, find their food. So you want to do the drop with a rig squid, a dolphin, a bonita belly, even a whole ladyfish will work. And then power drift above your bait uh, just to keep your, you know, keep a straight line that you can feel the bite and you'll get the bite. At night, you want to listen to the radio, move to the depth where the fish are being caught. That's usually around 1,700 or 1,800 feet, a little bit deeper at night. Average swordfish is going to be 50 to 100 pounds. But some of the daytime guys are catching fish up to, you know, like 400 pounds. So you know, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. 80 wides are probably the way to go. 
All right. The other thing we got going, you know, anytime we get a little northerly or easterly wind, it stacks up the weeds. That defines the current. Um, it defines the current edges. Really improves the overall dolphin bite. This week, the better action was kind of out deep, say 800 to 1500 feet of water, or you know, that's at least where the bigger fish are being caught. You know, but but there were still plenty of schoolies encountered in anywhere from 70 feet of water on out, particular. Uh, particularly around floating objects like trees or boards. Um, the action is so spread out, the key is to, you know, find uh, cover with a lot of water, cover a lot of water either by trolling with feathers or strip baits, running and gunning. This is a good time to break out the binoculars, run a mile, stop, scan the area for anything floating, then run another, you know, another mile, do it again. And when you see something that looks good, troll around it or stop up pitch live baits to it, uh, and you'll find the fish. It takes a while. Keep doing it all day. You'll eventually find the dolphin. Average dolphin's going to be 5 to 15 pounds. I got a photo there. <clears throat> that's Sonny Stein. That's the largest dolphin he's ever caught in his life. Woo! And uh, so he was pretty cool. proud of it. Good that's a him. cool picture, man. Not a cool little fish. I put him in a tank. Not everyone can do that. All right, yeah, let's exactly. go snook fishing, bub. Well, you know, if you're looking to catch a trophy snook, August is one of the best months to find them on the beaches in the inlets around the, and also around the bridges that are close to the inlets. You know, this is a great time of year for soaking, you know, mullet head on the bottom and just waiting out that one big fish bite, particularly if you're looking for like that 30 pounder that you want to put on the wall. It's all catch and release action. It's outstanding right now in all the inlets as well as in the surf at places like Jensen Beach, Hopetown Beach, uh, you know, in the Lake Worth and Juno Beach piers will always have fish on them day or nighttime. If you like to fly fish, you can go down to the Hopetown Wildlife Refuge, cast to the moving fish that are kind of cruising through, or you can blind cast around the minnow schools. On the south side of Fort Pierce Inlet, there's a ton of bait in there and a ton of fish feeding on them. Or you can even like go up to Vero Beach and, and walk the beach in front of the Rio Mar area uh, and just blind cast and do pretty well on the snook. Bait fish patterns and natural colors are the way to go um, in the inlets. Pretty much a live bait, deep water game with croakers, red fins, sardines, or sandpers, whatever you can get. Those are going to be your top baits, and the average snook is going to be like snook, well, like six to 12 pounds. And then uh, if you like to throw soft plastic for sea trout, there's a great morning bite going on in the Indian River up in St. Lucie County. Um, you can focus on the spoil islands and sandbars, like the twin bars that are off Middle Cove or the islands around the west side of the river, just north of Harbor Branch. Uh, there's also been some big trout caught around Bear Point and around the J.C. Park area, but the best action by far is around those, those visible spoil islands when there's a moving tide. The bite's been early from false dawn to about 8 a.m. The fish are all coming around the mullet schools that are gathered in those areas. You can't miss a mullet. They're all breaking the surface. They're all finning, uh, the fish, and the fish are right in the middle of those mullet schools. And, uh, you know, the trout are, fish are focused on the mullet, so topwater plugs or uh, a saltwater assassin dye dapper and in the mullet colors like silver and black and, and gold and black, those are going to be your top baits. Uh, a five-inch shad and Papa Smurf is also going to do really well. Average sea trout is going to be two to four pounds, but there's going to be fish to nine pounds being caught pretty much the entire month around the spoil islands. All right, let's go uh, do a little bass fishing. What report did you get this week? Well, you know, the morning shad bite in full swing in Lake Okeechobee. We've been hearing about it, and this is kind of the peak of the shad bite. Bass of three or four pounds are busting the shad on the surface from first light until about 9 a.m. You want to look for those fish between Henry Creek and JNS Fish Camp. Uh, there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of southeast wind, so a lot of, a lot of that, that shift has sort of been to the, the northeast side of the lake. Best actions coming around the Kissimmee, bed, or Kissimmee grass beds. Look for birds diving, or even just kind of shut down. You'll hear the fish popping those shads. Move to that area. Throw a white logger toad, a white die dapper, or a you know topwater plug in the in the pearl colors, and it'll do really well. And that bite will go longer. You know, overcast or the or uh, raining or the sun. You know, sun's not beating down on it. Once that sun gets up, it'll shut down really quickly. Then from there, you can go to live shiners, throw them up against the isolated lumps of grass around Dice's Ditch, 
or along the outside grass lines on the east end of King's Bar. There's also some good fish off Observation Shoal. You can pitch those areas with a, you know, like a 12-inch June bug colored worm, and you'll get that big fish bite if you're looking for that. The storms have come early this week, so you want to be off the water early to beat that heat and stay away from the lightning. The average bass right now on Okeechobee is one to four pounds, but there are some big fish and, you know, six or seven pounds in that mix around those isolated uh, clumps of grass. All right, thank you so much, Mike. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Atlas Jack Plate hotspots from the East Region. He says, inshore, flounder under the bait schools at Spur Jetty in Fort Pierce. I bet shrimp jigs and white curly tail saltwater assassin jigs will catch them. And then offshore, mangrove snappers on the Six Mile Reef. Threadfin, sardines, and strips of uh, bonita bellies is going to catch those mangs. What do you think? I think that sounds good. The Bell Central East region is looking pretty good, too, this weekend. If y'all are ready, Captain Jim Ross is on the line to give us details. Are we going to catch a memory this weekend, Jim? All right. I, I sure hope we all get out there and catch a memory. I'll tell you what, Bree, that's what I'm all about, and that's what hopefully everybody out there is all about as well. I know but you our fish <laughs> action here in the Central East region has slowed down a little bit. I was talking with Captain Joe Smith at FinFactorCharters.com, and he reported that the full moon usually has a tendency to slow the bite somewhat. He actually prefers fishing on a rising moon on his daytime swordfish trips. He thinks that that's the best way to get a good bite going. And so four days prior and then four days after the full moon, he seems to be very slow, and a lot of times he doesn't even like to go out on those days. So when you're booking a trip, you know, get with him about the moon because he's really dialed in on that. Now, Joe said 15 to 1,800 feet of water works best for his daytime trips, and he prefers to use a sewn bonita belly uh, over a dark-colored squid skirt. And uh, Joe says, you know, some of the biggest fish he catches throughout the year come in the fall and early winter months. So we're coming up to that time frame here pretty quickly. So you guys are going to want to book your trip pretty quick if you're wanting to get on board and do some of that. And I've got a photo here that Joe sent me of a really nice swordfish that he got on one of his trips a little earlier this year. All now, right. our second species, we were talking last week about the sportsman season, the mini, mini lobster season. And I got a report back from Captain Mark Gibson at NaughtyDivers.com. Got a photo here of Terry Pritchard. Al Perkins, Rick Schmidt, Debbie Planson, and of course Captain Mark, they got their limit of bugs. And I'm telling you, look in there. Some of those are real giants. They've got some really big big ones in that 70 to 90 foot range. Now I've got photo, another photo with just Debbie here with a close up of some of those lobsters. Wow. Now, I, Rick, I don't know if you and I could eat one of those things together. That's a big old thing now. I know one thing, I could die trying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then while they were down, Captain Mark and Debbie, Rick and Al and Terry also did some other stuff. They also did everybody out there a favor by getting some lionfish. And so you can see that they've got a nice grouping of those here. So while you're down diving for those lobster in those 70 to 90 foot reefs, if you can get some of those lionfish, go ahead and take them out too, because they do eat good. And of course, they're uh, a little bit uh, destructive when they're down there. Uh, swinging back inshore, Rick, uh, black drum still pretty good throughout the whole region from Ponce Inlet all the way down to Cocoa right now. Most of the fish are schooling around the bridges and you can find them with a variety of baits. Chunks of crab seems to be working really good. Of course, live or cut shrimp and even sand fleas. You can get them on a jig head. And I've got a picture here. Jen Jones fished with me the other day. She brought her son and her husband and his friend out on a charter and she got a really nice black drum with me just fishing uh, in the Indian River the other day. And then our last species, I got uh, a really good report from the guys at Salty Dog Outfitters up at Ponce Inlet. They said that the snook fishing on the recent full moon was absolutely fantastic. The nighttime bite was really strong at the jetty and at most of the area bridges throughout Ponce and then all the way down into New Smyrna. He said live pigfish, pinfish, and mullet are the best things to do. They're drifting them along the shadow lines of those bridges and, and, and around the jetty and those things are getting absolutely hammered. Now, lip diving plugs like the Rapala x Wrap in the size 12 or 14 in the mullet pattern, it's a brand new pattern that just came out with recently, are working really well also, so make sure that you're, you're gonna throw, throw, go out there and throw an artificial that you throw one of those x Wraps in the size 12 or 14. Most of our snook are running 25 to 35 inches, but there are some really big ones, especially on the live bait on the jetty. Some of those fish are pushing over the 40 inch mark. Okay, Jim, thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the sea sucker hotspots from the central east region. Offshore king mackerel on the near shore bait pods, slow troll live pogies on a wire stinger rig. And then inshore mangrove snapper and snook on the new Smyrna bridges. Use live fingerling mullet or shrimp on a sliding sinker rig. When I said fingerling mullet, it made me think about 
Russell Theron. Russell Theron. Oh, we missed Mr. <laughs> Theron. <laughs> All right, we're checking out the Central West region next, but first we're checking out new products at the CCA Workbench. I see some good stuff over here. Davey yeah, going butterfly look catching. Look at that. Wow. Isn't that neat? I can, yeah, it's so neat. I can we're going to figure your out face. what that's for. Yes, we are. Not for butterflies, <laughs> I'm sure. We'll be right back. Sorry, posts. <laughs> The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Soft Science, Supreme Comfort Footwear. Real Legends, exclusively at Bell's. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, and Pathfinder. Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 offshore four strokes. For those that like their V6 lighter, faster, and stronger. Setting new standards for power, efficiency, speed, and lightweight. Built for the rigors of offshore boating. Packed with Yamaha's legendary reliability. And now Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 four strokes offer a choice between digital or mechanical controls to match your rigging preference. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. This is Academy Sports and Outdoors. We offer a huge sports and outdoors selection of top name brand gear like you've never seen. All at low prices like you've never seen. Because we're a sports and outdoor store like you've never seen. Visit us in store or at academy.com for the guaranteed lowest prices. Academy Sports and Outdoors, for all for less. Well, Dave, we're here at the CCA workbench, and it's our time of the night to talk the product about showcase. new products. The and product showcase. I just saw it. <laughs> You're so smart. I know. It, it's amazing. <laughs> anyway, well, first off, we're going to talk about some Aftco uh, shorts. These are the Cloudburst uh, fishing shorts. They're kind of a hybrid. You can wear these. They're very nice looking. You can wear them outside to you know, walk down the dock, or you can go fishing in them. And these are very lightweight, as you can tell, very, very lightweight fabric, but they have the four-way stretch too. They got the, uh, the Aflex four-way stretch. They have an aft guard in them so that you get uh, spill soy sauce like I did on mine <laughs> today. It, kind of, it, it beads right up and falls off. Here's They're, what I, here's what I want to show you. Didn't mean, I'm sorry I interrupted. That's okay. But they also have on, if you can get a, a tight closure, closure in here, it? it actually is like a box of little ball bearings that kind of lock into a, a female and a male deal. It's so awesome. It's very confusing description, but they, they, it does. It does. It, it's a neat. It's a neat locking pocket, and, it, and it's a Cordura reinforced pockets for your pliers. You know, and just very, very, very comfortable. I, I want you to know, short. I'm wearing these. They're so very, I, when I step from behind here, y'all want to see what they look like. They're very nice. This now, is how they look. Now that little, the little net that I was goofing around with. This is this is a, a Ray Rocher product, the R and R tackle product, and this is called the Wet Net. And Ray made his living handle. handling bait well and and keeping his bait nice, and that's how he catches a lot of fish. And this Wet Net is made to to move baits around. And that clear bottom there, what it does is it it holds a little bit of water, keeps the bait lubricated and moist, and doesn't freak them out as much. And the, and the rest of the water can drain through this mesh. And what's really cool about that net is when you put it in there, they, you get it down in there, they see that clearness and they'll swim into it. It's not like you're having to chase them around. It collapses and 
it will collapse also down to storage and it has an extension, extension handle. correct so look at how we can reach out if you're up on the dock and you're trying to dip baits out of the net right now it's a lot easier because it's you got the length yep and when there's only a few left in there you know you can ha go back to the, your little mesh net and you're chasing those last two or three around because that adds a lot of drag when you're trying to catch them so you can get all there's three different sizes as well uh, 20 inch 31 inch and a 36 inch uh, they all have the retractable handles and they store very nicely. They've also, for the first time, they're starting to make some freshwater stuff R&R &R, and this is their new freshwater net for the trout guys. It'd be great to, you know, handle a little uh, rainbow trout in there or whatever and, and keep, him, keep him nice and healthy and not remove his slime, which is what all these nets are designed to do is to keep your baits healthy when you're handling them, which is a big you know, a big it's, deal. It's really smart. I would have never myself thought about it, but by having the water lay in the bottom of the net, yep. you can keep your fish essentially swimming and keeps not that, have to worry about keeps it. Keeps that slime layer on. So nice. Good job, Ray. Well, and we also <laughs> here we have some rod and reel safety leashes. You know, if you're going to be out offshore with these big, this big heavy tackle bouncing around in your, uh, in your, in your holders or your, even in your, on the, wherever you have your rod, you want to make sure it's secure. Now, and who's struggling with the description me, now? Me, I am. Okay. But you can clip, clip these onto your uh, bottom of your reel seat and then clip one around a, a cleat or something. And if your rod does bounce out, it's going to come tight on the end of this thousand pound mono and you're not going to lose them. They got stainless steel clips, so they're not going to bleed like all over it's everything. Coated so that it's not going to chip your gel coat or scratch anything. Correct. And, and it's coiled up nicely so it's not hanging all over the place, which is very important in the cockpit of a sport fish boat. You don't want a bunch of stuff hanging around, getting in your feet and diamond around fishing you. products. Yep. Diamond fishing products. <clears throat> this is a really cool Academy uh, light that I bought the other day. We, I fish at night a lot and I like to have a good light. That thing puts out a hundred lumens uh, at high power, an intense white light on the other side. That's the green one. But they have, they have a green light and a, and a, a black light, actually five different types of little and strobes, strobe. whatever. And it'll last three hours on high, 14 hours on low. So you can, you know, and you're turning that thing on and off. I, you could get a long. I like also, look how it adjusts so that you can adjust the angle, even though Correct. it might be on your hat or your forehead or right. whatever. Can, that's kind of cool. Very good. From Quaro. And I bought the, uh, that's an Academy product. Real quick, we got uh, the Yeti Rambler mug. It's a 14 ounce mug. It's got a big sized grip on it that's, that's welded on there. It's not going to come off. Uh, heat stays in, they're dishwasher safe, thick gauge steel, just like all the Ye all the Yeti uh, stuff. Radiant, you know, it's got a radiant barrier, you know, that, that vacuum seal inside there that keeps everything hot or cold. Comes with the lid. Comes with the lid. And it's also got a reinforced bottom uh, to protect that vacuum seal. It's a little tighter than the other one. So it, you can like bang it. it around and don't have to worry about punching a hole in it. That thing is, you know, I'd eat chili out of it. You know, I would. Thanks for sharing, Dave. Or cereal. Okay, man. That needs to be bigger, but uh, I could eat a lot of cereal. We, man, we faded there a little at the tonight. end there, don't you think, Bree? Yeah, your descriptions over there tonight are just on point. <laughs> <Aren't> Our <laughs> star on Central West Region Captain Jeff Page is up to tell us what a fantastic weekend on the water we're going to have. Right, Jeff? That's right. It's good to hear Ray Chachi Rose. You're talking <laughs> in there. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? Like I said last week, you guys, our theme species last week, the marlin, Swordfish is about the same kind of deal. It's an accessible species in our Startron Central West region, but you've got to get out there to the step, which is where the depth of the water drops from 600 to 2,000 feet on out, and that's at least at 110 miles. That being said, you know, I know down in the Keys and south part of our region, they do some daytime fishing. Here, it's pretty much a nighttime game, and you need to do your homework just like I was talking last week. Um, and you're gonna wanna get out there and run four different depths of lines from a surface line with maybe a live blue runner on it, clip the spins off, and then you're gonna wanna have another uh, bait, uh, squid or a bonita strip at 200 feet and then another one down at 300 feet. Now all that being said, a real good tip from Captain Chris Seeger is if you're out there during the day and you might catch uh, some mahi or marlin, and you want to go ahead and mark that area because that's a great place to start your swordfish night bite. Um, if you don't get out there during the day, the good good starting point is is uh, six, where that water goes from 600 feet to 1,200 feet, and then and you just work your way from there. 
It's an expensive game to play, but if you put your time in, you're going to get swordfish in our region. Moving to our next offshore species, red grouper rick, probably been most consistent out there. Remain strong with a lot of good keeper-sized red groupers coming in from 80 to 140 feet. Live pinfish as well as frozen sardines are working real good, even cut thread, thread fins. The key is smaller areas of hard bottom as well as Swiss cheese bottom areas. Swiss cheese bottom areas is going to get um, your better red groupers. I've got a really cool picture tonight of the flying fish fleet of a bunch of happy clients that went out with Captain Tim No out of Marina Jacks, and they got a bonus 70-pound Wahoo that's up on the board there. I'd say that's a bonus, nice. bub. <laughs> All right, let's go in short. Give me what you do every day. All right. Well, just like I said last week again, the afternoon thunderstorms, uh, a lot of the small bait has moved in the bays in big numbers, and you can see the birds hovering over them and, and the fish crashing them. Redfish are starting to gorge on those small hatch baits in good numbers around the Long Bar area in Sarasota Bay, as well as Palmasola and the Oyster Bars at Terracea Bay, and also out front of Rattlesnake Key. Um, the, like I said about the small bait, the good idea you can throw uh, surface plugs like uh, skitter walks in the chartreuse bone pattern or the live target scaled sardines. And then if you like throwing in the potholes, it's tough to beat the saltwater assassin, golden brim, five-inch jerkbait rigged on a quarter-ounce chartreuse jig head. I've also got good numbers of redfish showing up in the passes around Big Pass as well as uh, Egmont Pass in South Tampa Bay. Guys are catching these oversized reds at night on live pinfish. I've got a really nice redfish photo tonight of good friends of mine and clients, Dr. Russell Novak on his birthday Sunday with his son Kyle, who is attends the University of Alabama Roll Tide. That's right, Ooh. Roll Tide. Okay, let's go mangrove snapper My fishing. My last species tonight, mangrove snapper inside in the bays. Again, that, that small bait's got these fish friends in, and there seem to be, Rick, it's a pretty much everybody I've talked to, that four to six foot deep spotted bottom like the grass flats off the middle grounds, off New Pass, out there off Long Bar, but between Sister Ski and Long Bar, and then off Rattlesnake and Emerson, as well as the flats off Joe Island and Port Key. You just kind of want to find that spot at the bottom. You can put out a chum bag, kind of something you taught me down there in Florida Bay, and then just start using small pieces of cut thread fins, cut filters, or even small pieces of shrimp, and you're going to catch some nice mangrove snapper number two or a number four size hook on light fluorocarbon leader. The last photo tonight <laughs> is of young Niles Winters, one of many mangoes he caught with Captain Rick Gross of Anna Maria. All right, great report from the StarTron Central West region, Captain Page. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Daiquiri deck, Central West region offshore. Permit, the bite remains strong on M5 and M7 reefs off of Sarasota. And then inshore, Snook, Beat the heat with nighttime fishing in all the inlets and passes from Venice Jetty north to Bunzes Pass. Bree. Every time I see a little kid with a fish, it, I'm just so excited for Mia to catch her first fish. <laughs> and it better be with you, right, Rick? I it mean, better be, otherwise we're going to have a personal we're problem. Have problems. All right, Rick, we're still talking about CCA <laughs> Star, and guess what? What? There were three tagged redfish caught over this past week, and... They, they have a personal registered. problem. They, they weren't registered. Holy cow. In order to win, you guys need to be registered. <clears throat> There's still a new truck, Hughes, Carolina Skiff, or a Cottonmouth cotton mouth boat left to choose from, and they are all powered by Yamaha, plus $10,000 cash for the first tag dolphin caught by a registered angler. Winning fish can be found in Brevard, Citrus, or Charlotte counties, but remember, anywhere you fish can have a winning fish because you just need to catch illegal, non-tagged redfish, trout, snook, tarpon, kingfish, dolphin, or grouper, and you could win. Star is a catch photo competition and has 15 other divisions with non-tagged inshore and offshore species and $500,000 in prizes and scholarships. So get registered today at CCAFloridaStar.com, please. How about that, wow. Cassandra? Can you believe that? I know, I'm speechless too. We're headed to the Southwest <laughs> and Northwest regions here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. But before we take a short break, we want to remind you if you want to keep up with everything fishing in Florida, visit our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, watch us on YouTube, and view and tag us on Instagram. We'll be right back with your captains. 
The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala. Catch the latest at rapala.com. Startron cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Yeti, built for the wild. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 30 years. Strike Zone Fishing, your fish hunt paddle store. And Guy Harvey, marine wildlife artist and conservationist. Real Legends Performance Clothing. Everything you need to be comfortable on the water all day long. Keeps you cool, dry, and protected from the sun. Durable performance technology at an unbeatable value. Shop anytime or go to reallegends.com to find a Bell store near you. Flagler Construction Equipment is your certified Volvo equipment dealer, servicing 55 counties in Florida. With Volvo, you get brute strength combined with bulletproof durability. That means low downtime and optimal production. Flagler Construction Equipment is the partner for all your Volvo sales, service, and rental needs, and your first and last stop for legendary customer service and support. Push boundaries with Volvo. Get to know Flagler Construction Equipment by stopping by one of our six locations, or visit us on the web at www.flaglerce.com. Welcome back. The Bells Southwest region is now up with your captain, Ron Houston. So, Ronnie, tell us what is the latest and greatest. Well, you know, on the offshore side, we got the mangrove snappers. You want to concentrate your efforts from Marco to Fort Myers Beach, fishing most noticed wrecks, artificial reefs, and ledges six to 20 miles out. Now, the name of the game to locate this fish is going to be the chum. You can buy block chum or cut up herring and pelchards to get the fish going. Once you have them located, you want to drop back small cut baits to include herring, pilchard, squid, or shrimp. Now, if the water's clear, I strongly suggest downsizing to a light leader. Now, also, you can also flatline these fish once you get them located or add just a little bit of weight depending upon where they are in the water column. If the bite slows up, you're going to need to repeat the chumming process again and drop back small cut baits. Don't overfeed the fish. And I got a prime example of a limit of mangrove snappers and Spanish mackerels caught out of Naples by Captain Steve on the misbehaving. So there is opportunity for mangroves and, and uh, mackerel. Also on the offshore side, the Spanish mackerels and scattered kings fishing wrecks, hid pens, and large bait schools five to 15 miles out from Fort Myers Beach to Stump Pass. Look for the birds, large bait schools, and fish wrecks by trolling around these areas with silver spoons. Once you locate these fish, White bucktails, gotcha lures, live pilchards, all with a trace of wire. But if you get into the areas of some of these schools, if you have the opportunity to have some large herring or blue runners, drop down one of those baits below the schools. Opportunity right now to get king mackerel up to 30 pounds in those areas of the schools. Now on the inshore side, tarpon. Captain Josh Gear reports juvenile tarpon is pitched up to 50 pounds are being caught in the upper part of the harbor, throwing dark-colored gurglers and dark-colored baitfish flies, mostly black and purple or olive. Start early and fish till about 11 o'clock as, as it heats up. The bite slows down, but then get back out on the water after the storms until dark. The water seems to be a little cooler. He's telling me concentrate on creek or canal mouths and other pinch points that seem to have good water movement. Also, three to four inch root beer bass assassin and paddle tails, as well as three to four inch subsurface hard baits in black and gold, orange, as I saw that opportunity when I was just up there for a couple days, and I got a, a picture of a nice juvenile tarpon that was caught while fishing with Captain Josh on fly. Also on the inshore side, the snook. Nighttime fishing in the Punta Gorda area around residential docks and sea walls with good water movement, especially with the passing of this full moon. As well as fishing the outer Gulf Islands from Indian Key to Mormon Key, water movement is also important. Soft plastic shrimp like the bass assassin and a root beer or golden brim on a jig head. If you're gonna be fishing docks, you wanna go weedless, skipping the docks. Also subsurface hard baits and bone, chartreuse, white, olive, and red and white. Also, live shrimp free land around residential docks and seawalls. 
and I got a couple pictures of a nice snook on a nighttime bite down south <coughs> and a nice snook caught down south while fishing during the day. And you know, Rick, being that you like to hit me up with these last-minute questions that I'm not expecting, you know, playing with the serious weather I've talked about, when you see something coming, you know where to run and gun and get away from the weather. But you know what? There's another tool on there you can use. It's called animation. So when you see a storm coming to you and you think you want to run to the south, Hit the animation mode. It's got a current, a one hour, two hour, and three hour. It'll tell you where those storms are going to be in those particular hours. So having that app might want to tell you, don't run to those areas and run in a different direction. And remember this, guys, you don't have to have a cell signal because obviously it's satellite. But Ronnie, I do have a question for you. Uh -huh. I know you like my last minute <laughs> questions. You know, a few years back, we filmed a Sportsman's Adventure episode in the month of August on Tamiami Trail. Here we are in August. How's that bite right now, bub? Well, I can tell you right now, it's all about water flow and water movement. We're getting plenty of rain and water going from north to south, coming through those areas. But also, from the southwest of those areas of 41, the areas that dump out between Port of the Islands and the Barren River, where those feeder creeks dump out into those middle bays, check it out, guys. There might be something interesting going on. Now, there's a tip straight from the horse's mouth, the Midnight Rider. All right, bud, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Calusa Cast Net hotspots from the southwest region. Our guy Ronnie says, offshore permit, Indian Key to Wiggins Pass, fishing wrecks, towers, and artificial reefs with live crabs and bright colored bucktails. And then inshore redfish, Jack Daniels Key to New Turkey Key, fishing the outer Gulf Islands on the higher stages of the tide using live pilchards, gold spoons, or cut ladyfish. Also, a mullet on a knocker rig would probably work too, Bree. He doesn't like your questions, go figure. He does. He <laughs> loves being he put on not. the spot. He's the best at it too. He's pretty good. The Flagger Construction Northwest region featuring Captain Jeff Hageman is now up. So Jeff, tell us what should be on our weekend agenda. Well, the swordfish we have is actually a really good one to go to Mexico. Problem is, on my coast, you're going to make a run to get there. Um, boats are getting a little bit bigger now, They're getting more motors on the back up. They have more range, more speed, so there's a lot more boats that are able to get out to some fishing out there. We've got a great marlin fishery, a great sword fishery out there. It's just kind of untouched. The depth you want to kind of target is that 1,000 to 1,600 feet of water. That's the place you want to be. As far as rigs go, uh, a squid, flashing light about 10 feet up from it, blue, red, green, does not seem to matter. And then another one about 30 feet up from that. And then you're going to have um, onto your 200 to 150 pound fluorocarbon leader, you'll actually have a wax um, line that'll hold your um, pull off quick detached lead off your five pound lead and that's how you're going to have your rig for sword fishing either day or night that seems to be the best bait out there um at night the fish are going to come up in the water column so you want to stagger your baits anywhere from 600 to 150 feet up in the water column and even one on top most guys that are doing the overnight trips out there that make it worthwhile and actually fishing a few nights out there and our average sword fish is anywhere from 60 to 120 pounds we have some fish in the 200 pound range but there are a few of far between and getting them out there and getting caught to the southern part of my region is a little tough. The northern part of the region's got some bigger fish in it. Staying offshore, Captain JB of JB Trotters out of Apalachicola reports the mangrove snapper bite right now has been great in that 40 to 90 feet of water on reef and live bottom. Now he's chumming them up with pieces of shrimp and then chumming drifted fluorocarbon leaders back on a four rod excuse me, on a four foot long with a two out circle hook. Now what I'm meaning by that, he's kind of fishing like they do down the Keys with Yellowtail. He's actually burying that shrimp, that hook in that shrimp, and chumming with shrimp, and drifting back in that chum with a nice free line shrimp back to the mangrove snapper. And I've got a picture there of a nice Apalachicola mangrove caught with Captain JB. Nice. All right, what about Mario? We got anything from him this week? We do, the scallops are doing really well right now. And Captain Mario uh, Costello out of the Plantation Inn on Crystal River reports the scalp is very good right now. You want to look around the bird rack and Gomez Rocks in that four to five foot of water. Limits have been coming pretty easy. Uh, most of the cleaning stations have been reporting them coming in pretty solid. Everybody's kind of limited out within a few hours of each other. So um, most of the scallops right now are kind of sitting right on top, so there's no need to dig down to find them. Um, and if you do that, you're going to get your feet down the bottom, you're going to kick up some sediment. So try and keep your feet up. They're right on top floating, so that's another little tip to help you catch more scallops. And if you're 
a first time scalloper, um, you want to try and go on a lower tide. That'll help you find them in a little bit shallower water. And then move to deeper if you're not finding a bunch, but you'll see the boats and there's a bunch of them out there. Our little nine day trial season in the south went really well. Uh, we had some bad weather, but uh, those that went out there did, did well and limited out. And I've got a photo here. This one's from Captain Mario, not of anybody down south in our area, but he's got a nice limited scallop, which he always seems to find. Oh, he knows where they live for sure. Oh, well, that's I, for sure. I actually like that scallop, and it's right up my alley as far as the speed. You know what I mean? Yes, you do like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else you got for us tonight, Bub? Uh, Captain JB again from up in Apalachicola. His black drum report I couldn't pass up. It says they're really thick right now, mainly hanging on the edges of the oyster bars and biting an hour before and an hour after the tie change. They're mainly feeding on fresh dead shrimp. He's using a Carolina rig with a Juat hook. And I got a photo here of a nice black drum he caught on a recent charter. Wow. So, Hag, I want to ask you something. You know what, the scallop season that you had in the south part of the region, uh, how, how many days did you guys actually get rained out out of the nine days? Uh, the, it wasn't really rain, it was more wind. We had some rain too, but it was mostly wind, and the wind stirred up the scallop grounds pretty good. So there were some people that went, and they went on the tide changes when the water was moving and cleaned up a little bit. But it was more waves. That first weekend we got, it was, it was blowing 10 to 15 miles an hour. Uh, the guys that went Monday, Tuesday actually did really, really well. And as the week progressed, it got better and better. All right, well, hopefully uh, we'll get more days next year because you guys didn't whack them too bad this year. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the northwest region. Inshore, redfish are on the top of the tide. You want to look for them, use cut pinfish or ladyfish for bait. And then offshore, snappers on the high relief structure in 40 to 70 feet of water. Use a tail hook shrimp on a circle hook and a quarter ounce knocker rig. Bree. I saw a familiar face scalloping in that footage right Man, there. You, did so you happy. saw that, you saw that. Yeah, I did. Man. I'm proud of you. You got in the water. Yeah. We're good. We've got one more region to conquer here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, and that is the Northeast region. So I hope you're ready because we're coming to you next. We'll be right back. Look at them. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Harbor Trucks. Visit harbortrucks.com. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Suffix. Always use the best line. The IGFA. Fish for the future. Flagler Construction Equipment. Your exclusive Volvo dealer. And Okuma. Inspired fishing. When you're moving a big offshore boat, it's all about thrust and trust. For thrust, nothing compares to the Yamaha purpose-built 5.3-liter V8 Power Pioneer. And for trust, Yamaha's new F350C model becomes the only outboard in its horsepower class to feature a five-year limited warranty. Never settle for less than complete confidence and control in the open water. That's Yamaha V8 Power. Get the best and forget the rest. Outside is a bully. There are bears screaming in fleet footed waters. Arrogant mountains. Goliaths. 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 And a hundred other excuses to stay inside. But there are ways to deal with bullies. days of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. Hi, this is Chris Freeland of Harbor Trucks, and my family has been in the business for over 70 years, and I hope that means as much to you as it does to us. Trucks have always been my passion, and I've assembled a team of experts to help find the right truck for you. Harbor Trucks also has a dedicated commercial department that can design and deliver the perfect truck or van 
for your business anywhere in the country. Our staff includes master technicians ensuring every one of our trucks goes through a rigorous inspection and reconditioning process. We also have a team of customization experts that can build the truck of your dreams, including custom tires, rims, bumpers, LED lights, and more. Come test drive every make and model in one location at our on-site towing and test course, or we can deliver an amazing truck directly to you. Harbor Trucks, hassle-free buying and low, low, low prices. Check us out now at harbortrucks.com. That's harbortrucks.com. Today's Power Pole Tip of the Week is about what do you do when the water's too deep to touch the bottom? Well, I'm gonna tell you some of the things that I look for is how am I going to stop my boat? Now, as you know, some guys use their trolling motor and they lock the boat in position. What I found in tarpon fishing is if the trolling motor's running, most likely I'm not gonna be able to get close to the fish that I wanna catch because of the movement of the boat, not necessarily the noise. But by using my power poles and looking for something that may be overhanging or submerged, because of the unique designs and the way the poles go out to the side, I use the spike and hook it on something that's submerged. Maybe it's an undercut bank in a creek. For you guys that are bass fishing, you can stick the spike in a bush, and guess what? It will hold you in place. 20 feet of water is not a problem when you have stuff that is coming up to the surface. So keep that in mind. It's a pretty cool secret that I have, and that's today's Power Pole Tip of the Week. So you know, Bree, silence is king when you're out there and you're fishing fish that have been pressured. Yes. So what I've learned is by spot locking your trolling motor, the trolling motor's still running. Even though it'll hold you in a spot, it has to run. And so a lot of times the RPMs of the trolling motor is varying. Mm -hmm. That can be enough of not getting the fish close enough to either cast to or get into your zone where the bait is. So what I did, or what I do quite a lot in the rivers, is I'll find a branch that's hanging over, laying in the water, back the boat up to it, and actually use the power pole to hook the branch. Hugging and that, trees, man. Oh boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? Well, you know, you <laughs> do are. I look that's like great. A tree yes, Come sometimes on, man. you do. In this case, you are. <laughs> Captain Tommy Derringer is now up in the straight zone northeast region. So just save me, Tommy. Go for it. Tommy, <laughs> am I a tree hugger? In this case, hey, yes. You gotta hug a tree every once in a while. All right. Right. If there you put go. the power pole, it's okay. I appreciate you guys <laughs> keeping me straight as between as you and Bree. I'm, I'm doing something. Uh, you know, guys, it, there's not too many people really targeting swordfish here in the Strike Zone Northeast region. You know, there is a core group of anglers that do get out there and they catch some big ones. Now, the best time of year to fish with the swordfish is gonna be the fall through the early winter but they can be caught year-round. Most of the captains that I spoke to say that the moon is gonna play a key role in that swordfish bite. A few days before the full moon is typically gonna be the best, and the fish tend to feed when the moon is rising, and they seem to quit as it sets. Now, that being said, most Northeast Florida anglers are targeting those swordfish at night. Some anglers are gonna start down in the south end of the region towards Ponce, and then drift, north, uh, drift up north, ending up in St. Augustine by the end of the night. Now they use some pretty heavy tackle with some big squid rigged on a 10 on J hook along with a strobe and up to 24 ounces of lead. Now they're fishing in over a thousand feet of water and they're gonna have baits at varying depths from about 100 to 400 feet. There's also some young guns here in the region that are starting to do some daytime sorting as well. Now those guys are gonna use electric reels. They're gonna fish really deep in about 1500 to 2000 feet and they're actually gonna drift their baits close to the bottom. Now, not a whole lot of people are going to be willing to go those 80 plus miles to get to those depths. But if you do get the shot, the sword fishing's pretty darn good out there. And I've got a picture of one of those good ones. This is Whoa. Nate Clardy and Captain Trey Jones, along with their crew, with one of those wow. big Northeast Florida swordfish. That was caught in the daytime. Dang, I'd, I'd say it was caught in the daytime. Know. Wow, that's a studzilla, baby. All right, <laughs> yeah, what you got offshore for us? The mangrove snapper, man, they just won't stop chewing here. Uh, not offshore stuff, you know, the guys are still catching the heck out of the mangrove snapper throughout the region. I spoke with Captain Jimmy Laidler from thelegendfishing.com. You know, he tells me he's been slaying those mangroves anywhere from about 100 to 150 foot of water out of St. Augustine. Now, Jimmy said they're chumming those mangroves up using cut and smashed sardines. 
Now, he said, depending on where you fish, um, it, depending on where those fish are sitting in the water column, you might have to chum them heavy or light. Now, on days when they're sitting close to the bottom, Jimmy said he's going to go through um, almost 50 pounds of sardines. And then when they're up in the column, he's going to go much lighter on the chum. Now, Jimmy has his clients use a really long 30-foot, 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon leader along with a four op BMC circle hook. And then he's just going to have them float a chunk of those sardines back in with the chum. But those mangoes, they're still big in the six to 10 pound range with some bigger ones mixed in. Speaking of big mangoes, I've got a picture here. Now, when I said Captain Jimmy is slaying them, I mean he is slaying those mangoes. Here's his clients and their catch from a recent trip out of St. Augustine. Dude, they Buckets. ran out of pigs. Buckets. I mean, they got, they got them they in did. wheelbarrows. They got them laid out. Uh, it's <laughs> awesome. All right, Tommy, tell me some inshore stories. Well, you know what, man? We've got some really good snook bite happening in the south end of the region right now. I spoke to Gene from the Fish and Hole Tackle Shop in Daytona Beach. Now, he tells me his customers are catching some nice snook around the downtown bridges right before and then after dark. Gene said bomber long A's as well as wind cheaters are working really well around those bridges. Now there's also a good snook fight going on in the residential canals from Daytona all the way up to Palm Coast. Top water and subsurface plugged early in the morning and or a big live shrimp if you can find them. The shrimp have been a little scarce here lately. Just fish those around the seawalls and the docks and you're probably going to get some interest from one of those canal snook. I got another picture here. My friend Maria Lupe Lopez, Lupe Lopez sent me this picture of Jamie Hullett with a big old snook that she caught fishing from the bank at the Tomoka State Park. And that's a big one for, for our region. Now also inshore guys, you know, we have an early morning low tide this weekend and that's the perfect time to get out early and find some redfish up in the skinny stuff, chasing some bait. Look for busting and backing fish in the backs of the creeks in St. Augustine like Cassicola and Stokes, as well as uh, the Guana River. Now, tossing a saltwater assassin elite shiner in the Houdini color has been working well as it mimics those small mullet just right, and it doesn't make much of a splash either, so if you're sight fishing to those guys, perfect bait for that. Now, I spoke to Captain Buzz Brannon from NortheastFloridaAngling.com, and he tells me he's been on a good redfish bite as well. He's fishing the small creek mouse right on the ICW up in Jacksonville, around Queens Harbor and Crying Child Island, which that's, that's probably another name for my house most of the time. <laughs> Bud said that those reds, they're eating rapala skitter walks early and then a live finger mullet later in the morning. Most of those fish are in the three to five pound range. And I don't think there's anything better than watching one of those red fish smash, absolutely smash a topwater plug. You're absolutely right. Thank you so much, Tommy. Great report from the Strike Zone Northeast region. We're going to go take a look at those hot spots offshore. Mangrove snapper on the reefs and wrecks throughout the region in 100 to 150 foot depths. Chum them and then use cut sardines or cut, chum them using cut sardines. Blah. And then inshore, snook and tarpon in the residential canals in the south end of the region from Daytona to Palm Coast. Crying Child Island, don't want to know. I know, I couldn't get over that's why I couldn't talk. Don't want to know. <laughs> well, we've given you all we got, so go out there and get them this weekend. But for now, don't go too far because we're telling you what we're getting into next week right here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Look at that shock. Master your most challenging offshore experience with confidence and ease with Yamaha Hellmaster. Precise, intuitive control on the open sea. Unrivaled ease for maneuvering and docking in port. And now Setpoint adds three new dimensions to boat control. Maintain boat position with fish point, or a position and heading with stay point, or a heading while you drift with drift point. Yamaha Hellmaster, now with Setpoint. Complete digital control for today's larger offshore boats. paid to put fish in the boat, you don't mess around with the thing that puts fish in the boat. Always use the best line.
Thanks for tuning in to the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram to keep up with our captains, contests, and appearances. You never have to miss a show. You can find full episodes, special segments, and updated fishing reports from your region right on our homepage. Just head to FloridaInsiderFishingReport.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up. Make sure to tune in next week because we are talking about Wahoo. Wahoo! Wahoo. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. But right now, we have, what is your name? My name is Dakota. And we're going to ask Rick a question. Are you ready for the question? Yep. Go for it. What's your favorite type of fish? Oh, that's pretty easy, especially <laughs> this time of year. I love tarpon. The reason why is they're six foot long. They're, they jump six feet high, and we can catch them out of a 16-foot boat. And thank you, Dakota. That's Ray Rocher's son that there. That is Ray's son. And, and he's inspiring, I believe, to be a marine engineer. Is that right, that's Dakota? That's amazing. Cool. That's super cool. All that, right, was a, man. that was a great question, Rick. You answered it very well. Thank you. You're welcome. Tarpon. <laughs> yeah, we hope you guys get out there this weekend. Enjoy the water, and we will Wahoo. see you next week right here at Talking Matt Water.